Hi, we're here at the Milken Institute Global Conference. I'm here with Rob Silvers, Undersecretary in the U.S. Department of Homeland Security. Rob, thanks for joining me today. It's great to be here. So, there's been a lot of talk about AI. Uh, we've heard everything about how amazing AI is going to be to solve some of the world's biggest problems. There's been talk about the future of work and jobs. But I think what we want to talk about is, you know, the, the threats that AI potentially poses both, you know, and how the government is, is thinking about it. Well, I want to be clear. There are threats. There are risks. But this is a technology that we should be embracing and we are embracing, even in our own operations in the U.S. government to provide services to the American people. AI is going to cure incurable diseases. It's going to create incredible economic opportunities for people. And so we are all in on embracing this technology. But we have to recognize that like any technological advancement, there are risks that come with it. And so what we're doing is we're developing very practical guidelines for companies that are moving AI into their core operations to make sure that they're getting the benefits from that, but are doing it in a safe and secure way that protects people. So, for example, you start moving AI into operations of the electric grid, hospital system, mission air traffic, critical. mission critical stuff. You have to have some guardrails. And we've had safety guardrails in those kinds of fields for a long time, and we need to have it for AI. We're developing that. So November, right, Biden administration had the executive order putting out some of these guidelines. The guidelines are different than how the EU has de dealt with regulating AI. Talk about sort of, you know, the approach that the U.S. is taking vis-a-vis -vis Europe. Europe has taken a very forward-leaning regulatory approach. They've passed the EU AI Act. Uh, we are uh, right now in the domain of working through voluntary commitments with some of the frontier model developers in the AI world. We're issuing guidelines for critical infrastructure operators to uh, operate from so that they're doing it safely. We will probably end up in a place in this country where some elements of artificial intelligence usage are regulated. That's probably inevitable. But we also need to be humble about what we know and what we don't know. We don't want to squash the innovation. We want to study it closely. We want to work together with industry to understand it so we can do things smartly. One model that we're doing is the Department of Homeland Security just announced the creation of a new AI safety and security board. And the membership is incredible. It's, pri it's, it's government members chaired by our, our department secretary and then private sector members like Sam Altman from OpenAI, Sundar Pichai of Google, Satya Nadella of Microsoft, Jensen Huang of NVIDIA, and on and on. We have civil society leaders that are focused on civil rights and privacy. We have critical infrastructure owners like the CEO of Delta Airlines and Occidental Petroleum. And through this kind of forum, we're going to together arrive at solutions that allow us to get all that gain. There's so much gain to be had, but with a security architecture around it. And when you think about sort of the regulation, it's not necessarily just of the platform, right? You can't just regulate open AI. It's the application, how companies are embracing and using it. So the guidelines are for the companies that are using the AI, not just the AI companies themselves. That's exactly right. There's responsibility to do this in a safe way at all points in the ecosystem, from the frontier model developers, the open AIs, the Anthropics, the Googles, and the like down to the end customers, the corporate end customers that are putting this great technology to work for their businesses and for the people that they serve. And there's different things that each of those partic market participants can do to make sure we're doing this in a safe and secure way. And at the Department of Homeland Security, we're in the lead for making sure that that's coming to fruition. So obviously safety, security, the other, the other big threat, cybersecurity, AI has probably accelerated even the challenges facing cyber. You know, how are you thinking about sort of that intersection AI and well, what's happening in cybersecurity? Yeah, the drumbeat of very serious cyber attacks continues. We see that with the ransomware attack on Change Healthcare, which has disrupted huge segments of the healthcare system, which accounts for 20% of our economy in this country, as well as people's medical care. And it's had tremendous disruptive impacts. So we see the importance of companies doing all they need to do to take the defensive actions on the front end before they get hit to try to head ransomware off. And we've put out a lot of resources about what companies can do. We also have to be realistic, though, that you can't always expect a public school district, 
a small water utility in a rural area to have a very sophisticated cybersecurity program. So we need to push on the big technology providers to make high quality software. So we're working with the biggest tech companies to show them what it means to do security by design as they build the products that everyone else uses. That is the long game on how we're going to have better cybersecurity. So when we think about bad actors, right? You know, again, we can think about sort of individuals. We can think about globally what's happening. We could also look at nation states. So obviously, when we start to think about, you know, how the U.S. relations with Russia, with China, you know, obviously, I'm sure that comes into conversation. When we start to look at companies like Huawei and TikTok. You know, talk a little about that. How does the U.S. have to respond, especially when these foreign companies are operating in the U.S., huge amounts of data and security sort of implications. You know, talk about how the Department of Homeland Security thinks about, you know, those types of companies. We need to be really vigilant to any time that a, a technology, a sensitive technology that ultimately is controlled by a China-based company uh, is deployed out in our economy. Uh, with Huawei, which is a telecommunications firm based in China, we have actually done a lot of work and been successful in pushing Huawei out of a lot of the core telecoms infrastructure in this country because we can't accept that level of risk that a company that might ultimately answer to the demands of the Chinese government uh, having us uh, over a barrel uh, with a proverbial gun to our head uh, over our most sensitive infrastructure. With respect to TikTok, obviously the, the popular social media app, uh, our administration worked closely with Congress on recent legislation that president that passed bipartisan basis and President Biden just signed it to require TikTok, uh, ByteDance to uh, divest TikTok uh, to a trusted buyer, yeah. like a US-based uh, buyer, or face a ban in this country. And we think that's the right thing to do because you cannot have a company that is answerable to the Chinese government have access to all that personal data, our kids' data. I mean, think about the demographics that are using TikTok. Right. And you also can't have them owning what is amounts to a propaganda machine, right? Think about who controls the algorithm of what content is pushed to the 150 million users of TikTok in the United States. And so we're very glad that Congress passed this legislation. President Biden just signed it into law. Great. So, you know, we ask CEOs all the time, you know, what keeps you up at night? You know, you sit in government, get to see a lot of scary things. What keeps you up at night? Look, I sleep because I, because I think that while we have a lot of threats out there, we also have a very strong security architecture in this country that is protecting the American people day to day. But listen, you have to have your antenna up when it comes to issues like ransomware. That can cripple a company instantaneously. You obviously have very concerning activity out of China, uh, doing cyber intrusions into U.S. critical infrastructure companies, seeming to be pre-positioning themselves in case there's some kind of conflict between the two countries so that they could disrupt essential service delivery. There's real threats out there. There's terrorist threats too, and that's a big part of what we do at our department. And since the October 7th attacks uh, uh, by Hamas, uh, the terrorist group, uh, in Gaza, we are in a heightened threat environment, but we're working every single day to protect communities around the United States, to educate them, to equip them with funding, to protect themselves by security cameras, grants to police departments around the country, offering protection to vulnerable communities like the, the American Jewish community uh, and the like. And so that's something that we are very focused on too. Right, well, Rob, thanks uh, for joining me today. Terrific to thanks. be here.